This is the Cube Kathmandu, and you can see we've got a few different models here. I'm gonna focus on the one, then we go up to the Pro, and then the EXC, and you can see the bright colors, the color match suspension fork. These two have through axles, but interestingly, they all have the same motor. This is the Bosch Performance Line CX, so that's like kind of heavy duty, higher torque output. They all have the power tube and you can actually choose the 500, the 625 or the 750, which is really nice. And they all come in the high step or this really nice approachable step through. They also have suspension seat posts. So that's really nice. It sort of creates a full suspension feel between the 100 millimeters of suspension fork travel and then a little bit of bumper here. At first I thought this was a dropper post because of how sleek it is. You know, it's this black, almost anodized look. And while we're on that topic, this 100 millimeter SR Sun Tour suspension fork, 30 millimeter stanchions up here, it's a spring fork. This is steel, so it's a little bit heavier than an air fork with anodized stanchions over there. And of course, the stanchions get a little bit thicker. We've got 32 millimeters way up there. Okay, so coming back to the suspension fork, we got preload adjust so you can preload it to your body weight and possibly your cargo weight, although that's gonna be pretty far back here. This is a 25 kilogram max load, really nice just interface on the top here. We've got a spring latch, we've got these pannier hangers on the side, and a bit of a blocker. And this is actually paint matched material that's welded to the frame and it carries through on the fender. And that's part of what supports that rack. So right here and right there, and then it's just very clean, looks awesome. Nice acid branded fenders, these are plastic. Acid is a cube brand, so you can see that right here as well on that, um, it's kind of a trunk bag interface. I wanna point out here, that we've got a frame lock or a cafe lock mount. And that's pretty rare to see. I'm, I was really happy to see that. Almost looks like there's even like a cargo rack threaded eyelet there as well, even though we already have a cargo rack built on. And then we've got mounting points, direct mounting to the lowers of the suspension for the front fender. So I really like to see that. I mean, that is a little bit sturdier in my opinion compared to like a plastic cuff that we see over here with this little rubber band, this can dry out over time, it can slide. So to see that on the highest end version of the Kathmandu, that was surprising to me. I was like, oh, you know, these ones are actually, I, I kind of prefer this, this direct mount. The fender doesn't go super, super low, and that sort of fits the hybrid application. I mean, this is almost like cross country capable with that 100 millimeters of travel up front. This one has standard 100 millimeter hub spacing with a nine millimeter quick release skewer. And then we come back here and there's no quick release in the rear. So keep that in mind. If you had to do trail maintenance or something, you might need a tool set. And the other thing that's interesting is whether it's at the high end or not, there's only bottle cage bosses if you get the high step frame and they have two of them. So that's wonderful. Great to see that to carry like a folding lock or a, a pump or a water bottle or something. And they just don't have any on the step through versions. I feel like they could have had bottle cage bosses right there. I was really surprised to see that actually. They all have the same pedals, these plastic with the nubs and stuff. They, they do a pretty good job. You could always swap those out with like some magnesium Welgo pedals with the adjustable pins. So the bike weighs about 58 pounds you're getting 85 Newton meters of torque. And one of the other trade-offs is Shimano Dior, that's great, but if you upgrade to the Pro, you get that one-way clutch, which is gonna help keep that chain from bouncing around. Same thing here with the EXC. And this one actually weighs a little bit more, 61 pounds. I think that's, it kinda depends on the battery that you're choosing as well. Anyway. Let's talk a little bit about the tires. We got the Schwabi Big Ben Balloon. These are 28 by 2.15. I love the reflective sidewall stripes on these. There's a little bit of puncture protection, performance line race guard, light skin. Those are the add-ons. And then we have reinforcement eyelets on the rims. So you can see that it reduces the possibility of cracking if you're adjusting these and truing them over time. So very nice, whether it's the rims, the tires, everything, really well done. And I love that we've got a little kind of cut off chain cover right here. So it's sort of sporty, right? Back here, the chain can bounce around a little bit and maybe you're saving some weight or just the aesthetic, it's a little bit easier to adjust. You can see there's a link right here if you have to you know, reconnect the chain or uh, adjust it. And we've got that coverage. So that's gonna keep your pant legs, your dress ends from touching that chain and getting snagged, getting greasy. Gotta love that. And then back here, Shimano Dior derailleur, 11 to 42 teeth. This is a 10 speed. 
And up here we got the trigger shifters, two-way up high, multi-shift, three shifts on the lower lever, very reachable, adjustable angle stem, nice sort of mid-rise handlebar, ergonomic grips. The cockpit is similar on all these bikes. Again, adjustable angle, a little bit of a little bit of a height here, and then the, the mid-rise bar. The interesting thing is, you know, of course we get those nicer shifters and everything. So I love that at kind of even at the entry point, we have the two-way because a lot of times it seems like that's one of the, the areas where they compromise. We also have a bell here, which is nice, kind of signaling people, and we get a fancier bell if we go up to this. So you kind of get the idea. I think the biggest upgrade though is going to the Kiox 300. You see that right here along with the LED remote right here on the one, we've got the Intuvia 100. So this is a gray scale, still removable. And of course you can use the Bosch e-bike flow smartphone app on any of these. And you can adjust the performance of the motor. You can have like a geofencing on lock. Um, lots of potential with this in route planning, all kinds of stuff. It's This is the latest generation of Bosch electric bike hardware. And I, I really like it. One thing I complain about a lot though is, you know, imagine you got the 750 watt hour power to battery. There is a plug at the base of this LED remote, but it's really only for diagnostics. You can't charge your phone off of the e-bike system. It's too bad. One thing that I love about the step through frame is we've got the battery mounting from the top, right? So there it is. You can see this plastic chunk here because I think we might have a power tube 500 in there. And if you wanted to upgrade to the 625 or 750, it, it could be a little bit longer. It just seats really well. It's color matched. It looks good. If you get the high step frame, you've got a bottom loading battery right there. And then it gets a little crowded with the fender and everything, especially depending on the frame size. This is like a 58 and this is a 46. So wide range of frame sizes, colors and options from these guys. A couple of the other trade-offs, um, we're using this little magnet that goes by the reader. And as you can see, those get bumped out of position sometimes or dirty. And so you get read errors potentially. The latest generation of sensors can go right here on the hub, sort of where the, the disc brake rotor mounts. And then it's just, it's a, it's a lot better protected. You can see the charge port for the battery is down low and it's directly in the path of that crank arm. So you imagine if it's plugged in and then this gets cycled backwards, it could unplug it or, you know, kind of crack it or something. I, I think they're pretty durable and Bosch stuff is highly water resistant and, you know, dust resistant, but you're still lower and this, the bike kind of tips towards you down here. So it, I'm, I'm a fan of having that up higher on the right hand side of the bike. Um, that's just one of the trade-offs. Another trade-off is right here where that, that key is. Um, you have to sort of twist and unlock the, the battery. And when you're putting it back in, you have to twist again to, to sort of put it in. You can't just slap it into place. Again, it's a lot easier to work with that on the step-through models just because of how it's positioned. I love we got a, a slap guard there. And overall, I mean, the, the bike does a good job whether you're doing maybe commuting to work and you need something that's way stronger than necessary with that performance line CX, but also capable of handling those weekend rides. Maybe you could even take this touring, especially with that high capacity battery, load it up with bags and stuff. To me, Cube is one of those companies that's like high quality and just has like an abundance of choices to make it what you want. So this was just a review short. My idea was to, to give you kind of an overview. Um, this is a free review. I'll be looking at these other bikes as well. And uh, if you wanna see more or do like a full in-depth, just leave a comment and I'll do my best. Love you guys, ride safe, see you next time. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing it with a friend. And check out my website, electricbikereview.com. There's an awesome category and filter tool set that will help you navigate thousands of electric bikes to find the right one for your lifestyle and budget. You can post comments, connect in the forums, and discover local shops so you can go in for a test ride and get your bike set up just the way you want it. I've been running EBR since 2012, providing the best data and limiting the ads. Have fun out there, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.